One of the scariest parts of any presentation is when you get to the end and you say, thanks for listening, I'll now happily take any of your questions. That is when you open up yourself to a load of questions that may not make sense, that potentially are trying to trip you up, or that are just kind of mean in some way. And so in this video, I wanna share with you all of the ways that you can dodge and get around tricky questions. And let me say this, typically in an academic environment, there are not people that are out to actually get you. They are actually genuinely either quite interested and want to find out more if you've gone down a particular rabbit hole, um, or they just want to make themselves feel good and clever. And uh, you can use that to your advantage when you are answering the question. So the first thing I always do if I am faced with a difficult question about my research is I seek clarification because in your mind you're at like a hundred miles a minute you there you've been up sort of like in front of everyone your mind's going and you're kind of like at a point where you're you're racing and you're making assumptions about the crowd and to be honest with you a lot of the questions you get will be so basic that you actually over interpret them and you think they're asking something very very deep and sort of like deep rooted and hardcore about your research. They're not. So seeking clarification just means that you'll be able to make sure you are on the same kind of level as the question was intended. Because I've seen so many times a really simple question being asked and then the person presenting assumes that it is a super deep hardcore question because that is what they're projecting. That is the lens through which they viewed the question. So just ask, what do you mean by that? Or any other question that helps you kind of find the right level for your answer will be the first port of call. And the more of these sort of simple responses you can get into your presentation toolbox, the more relaxed you'll feel. And let me just say this up front. It is also completely okay to say, I don't know. But there are more elegant ways to say that, and we'll talk about that in this video. As always, this video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. And when you sign up, you'll get all of my little tasty secrets, including the perfect daily schedule, how to write the perfect abstract, the tools that I use, and more. It's exclusive content available for free, so go sign up now, zero spam. There are so many times when people ask a question and it comes out of left field, and you can just say, that's a very interesting question, but my data doesn't tell us anything about that at the moment. And that's just saying, look, I've done all of this work. It's a little bit of a kind of underhanded, kind of like, why are you asking me this kind of response? So all you have to say is that, yeah, sure, it's an interesting question, but that's not where our research is leading us at the moment. Um, and you can also ask them if they've got any experience in that kind of field, why they're asking that question, turn it into a little bit more of a conversation. Um, and ultimately, no one's expecting you to know every single thing about an entire field when your research is focused to a pinpoint of that field. So just saying, that's an interesting interesting question. My data doesn't really sort of tell us anything about that at the moment, but maybe it will in the future. Now you want to make your audience and your questioner feel as sort of clever as possible. And so throughout your presentation, you know, you'll go nice and slow. You'll start from the basics and build it up. But ultimately, as you're building up your research story, people will start to see things that maybe hadn't occurred to you before. And saying that is perfect because it gives you an ability to say, well, that's just not the direction I took this in. And it gives your audience member a chance to feel like they've contributed and they feel very clever. So you can just simply say, that question hadn't occurred to me, but I'd love to be able to answer something like that in the future. Remember that research and a research presentation is an ongoing thing. You're not saying that you know everything about this research field. So just saying like, well, that hadn't occurred to me. And in fact, we can probably find out a little bit about that in the future if we do this, this, and this. Once again, asking their feedback can also really help turn it into more of a conversation. And uh, yeah, you're not expected to know everything. That's insane. You are presenting a snapshot of your work as it exists in the moment. In fact, if they tell you and ask you these questions, it may help you in the future. 
One of my favorite ones is just saying, I don't know, let's talk about that in the break. Now, this is reserved for when you just have no idea, and it can be that maybe they have asked a question that maybe doesn't make sense in the context of your current research. And so just by saying, I don't know, just means that, you know, you're acknowledging that you have no idea and maybe that that's not the right question to be asking right now. But by saying, let's talk about it in the break or after, just gives them an opportunity to come up and talk to you. You can change, uh, exchange details and um, they can potentially push you in the, in the direction that they are uh, sort of like questioning around. One thing I would say is that you should never answer a question if you genuinely don't know the answer. Academics have trained themselves for many years to have like the best bullshit filter in the world. They know when you are making something up a mile away. So just say, I don't know. Maybe we can talk about it later. Just sort of like, means that your credibility actually goes up. Flipping the question back on the person that asked is also a sort of viable tactic. So one thing I always used to say is, do you have any thoughts about that? Because remember, the reason they're asking a question is not to try to trip you up, but potentially, you know, they're looking at your research through the lens of their experience and their research. And so by asking a question, they may be wanting sort of to push you in the direction of their own knowledge. And so by asking about whether or not they have any sort of thoughts about that, it just helps them feel clever. And it means that you get a little bit of an insight into what they actually meant by the question. Question. Now, if you ask that question, you have to be very careful. Then you have just become the chair of your session. So you've passed the microphone to someone else. They could talk for ages. So this is sort of like a, the risk that comes with this response is then at some point, if they're rattling on and on, remember, normally these talks are given in a sort of like certain amount. You know, you've got 10 minutes for questions or five minutes for questions sometimes. Um, you do have to say, look, I'll stop you there, but that's from, you know, interesting insights. Let's talk about it later. So there is a little bit of a risk to that one that you'll get someone that just wants to spill out all their knowledge just because they've got an audience and a microphone. In my time as a researcher, I have seen some incredible deflection techniques. Now these are more advanced techniques and they were normally sort of like delivered by very seasoned academics. But what essentially they were able to do, and I think it was with the help of media training from the university, is they were able to turn a question into a question they actually wanted to answer. And I've seen it done this way. Essentially they go, hmm, that's a really interesting question, but I think the real really interesting part of that is, and then they go on and answer another question. Now it has to be related, it has to be sort of a smooth segue, but sometimes you can just take a question that really doesn't make any sense to you and you don't want to answer, and you can sort of like mold it through some clever sort of linguistic uh, judo and push it out the other side into a question that first of all, you find more interesting, and secondly, you can actually answer. So once again, trial it, why not? In like a friendly seminar, if someone asks a question, just sort of like mold it a little bit. Just say, well, that's a very interesting question. And I think about it in these ways. But what I think is the most important thing about what you asked is this component and just sort of like, you know, divert the question. It works you can quite often catch it. So use it with care, but it also, I think it's kind of like a fun skill that you can build. And I've seen it from uh, some very good academics. And I think it was because they had media training, like I said. Sometimes the questions you get aren't even questions, they are statements. And all you have to do is you don't have to talk around it. This one's so simple. If you notice that someone just wants to spill out some information, use two words. You're right, but if you want to say like, you know, sort of like pump them up a little bit, you can actually say, you're absolutely right. Next question. Now this one's a little bit unethical, but I have seen it so many times that in the academic world, in any sort of presentation sphere, because the time is so tight for you to give your presentation, a lot of the time you can avoid people asking questions by just talking all the way to the end. 
And I've seen it so many times. Sometimes people don't mean to do it. It's just, you know, they've got too many slides or they get too excited and they just talk for too long. But you can use that as an actual offensive strategy for not asking, not having people ask you questions at the end. So all you have to do is continue talking. Just make your, your, um, your talk just to last a little bit longer and just make sure you finish at the end. And I have seen so many times the chair of a certain session say, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, but let's thank the speaker and let's move on to our next one. That is tricky. That is, uh, yeah, completely not allowed really, but it happens all the time. Do it, use it, why not? If you don't wanna answer, answer questions, just keep on speaking. So there we have it. There are the most effective ways that you can deflect or dodge or get around tricky questions at the end of your presentation. Presentations are really stressful at the beginning and at the end. When you're talking, it's your time, it's your story, fill it up. So this is one way to sort of like minimize the anxieties, especially at the end, is to have some very easy tools and sentence starters that you have in the back of your mind, just in case someone throws that weird question at you. But of course, Remember, it's your story, so they're just adding to it. They're not trying to like, you know, prove you completely wrong. Your supervisor shouldn't allow you to go out there to say some completely wild stuff. You should practice your presentation beforehand. So let me know in the comments what you would add. What do you do? Um, have you seen any crazy stories? I'd love to hear about them. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. And I'll see you in the next video.